My name is Bob Taylor. I'm your host for today's segment of Our Ventura TV. I'm here today with my guest, Michael Johnson with United Blood Services. How are you doing today, Mr. Johnson? I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me, Bob. What do you like to go by? Just Michael or? Uh, Michael is fine. Okay, great. Now, yeah. United Blood Services. A lot of people collect blood. How is United Blood Services different? You know, I, I hear we're having a blood drive for this school, or this, you know, like for Children's Hospital or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. How does United Blood Services differ from those, or how does United Blood Services work, actually? Well, United Blood Services is a uh, community provider. Uh, we're the second largest blood provider in the nation, next to the Red Cross. Um, we provide locally here in Ventura County, as well as Los Angeles County and San Luis Obispo. So we're up and down the central coast, uh, really prevalent in the California area, and uh, we like to say that we're a provider that can actually help all of the, the uh, patients in the hospitals and, and try to provide them what they need. Okay, so United Blood Service, you said a word that I really like, is local. Um, so each, United Blood Service is all over the United States, isn't it? That's correct. So each United Blood Services tries to keep their blood to the local areas? Well, what we do is we're, we're responsible with our blood supply. So we try to make sure that we have enough supply for all of the hospital patients in the local area, as well as we stand ready to support any catastrophes or emergencies that may require it that are outside of our service area. And then our, our network kind of operates as a system. So we're Blood Systems Incorporated is our parent company, and we operate under United Blood Services as a, as a local affiliate, United Blood Services, California. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're under uh, Blood Services Incorporated. Blood Systems Blood Incorporated. Systems Incorporated. Right. Okay, now, um, I always get calls from people, hey, we're doing a drive for Children's Hospital, or we're doing a Red Cross thing, and they bring the trucks out, and right. you go in and drink your little orange juice and give your blood <laughs> and that kind of thing. Um, you guys don't do that. You guys have a, you don't have your trucks out there. You just have Actually, a, we do. You we do provide, have one? Yes, we provide blood drives uh, the same way that you're familiar with. Uh, we have our blood mobiles at strategically placed in okay. community areas, at our local high schools, colleges. Uh, so we're very community oriented in providing to the donors an opportunity to donate where it is convenient to them. So that we also have uh, functional fix sites or places of business where they can come to us and donate in our facilities. All right, so if somebody, do you do drives for people? If somebody has leukemia, do you put somebody's name on it or anything like that? To, Absolutely. To, to Absolutely. encourage people to come out for that person? Absolutely. We encourage uh, honor drives in, in those cases. That's what we uh, typically title those types of uh, blood drives. Uh, but in general, we just try to provide a convenient location for people within our community to donate blood, whether again it's at our fixed site, if they happen to be in the Ventura area and uh, near Eastman Avenue, which is our primary location, mm -hmm. or if they live as far as, let's say, Thousand Oaks or even Newberry Park or Camarillo or even far as Santa Barbara, we have various different blood drive locations where we perform blood drives on a regular basis. So you, um, now, and I don't want this wrong towards anybody, but mm -hmm. um, sometimes the like, Children's Hospital will come out okay. or the Red Cross will come out. Mm -hmm. Is it like a competition for blood out there? Actually, it is. It, it's, it's somewhat of a competition, but I, I would have to say I think we're all in it for the right reasons. We all want to make sure that the hospital patients have what they need when they need right. it. So whether it's, uh, of course, we prefer that you donate with us as a competitor, right. but at the same time, I think our overarching goal is to make sure that all hospital patients require and, and receive the blood that they need at the time that they need it, regardless of the provider. You know, it kind of sounds like the credit union speech. You know, I mean, if you don't want to use our credit union, use a credit union because they all work together. And actually, that's kind of along the lines of, uh, it's, it's always been my personal spiel, just, just from my personal investment. It's like, we would like for you to donate blood with my organization, United Blood Services, but we just want you to donate blood because giving back to the community is something that we encourage, and we hope that everybody understands the significance of donating blood because at some point in time, you, your family member, or a friend of yours may need blood. Oh, yes, you're darn right about that. Now, I've always thought we have um, three things we can offer. 
time, talent, and treasures. Mm -hmm. And giving blood is one of those things that helps you utilize all three of those. I agree. You know, not everybody can give blood. It takes a little bit of a talent. Not everybody has the time. And what more of a treasure do you have to offer somebody than giving them your blood? Than giving them your blood. Yeah, I, I like that adage. I, I might have to add that in to our, our spiel. Well, <laughs> it, 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 it just seems like <laughs> such a natural thing to help people mm -hmm. is because is, you you're saving a life. Yeah, and and actually uh, to expound upon your, the first category of time, that's a lot of the things that we talk about in, in our department and in our organization is that we want to take advantage and value the person's time. So we realize that they're taking time out of their busy schedule to come out and donate blood on behalf of just us and just behalf of their fellow man and stewardship to the community and we really appreciate that so what what are some of the things that we try to do to show our appreciation for that donors time right now one thing that always kind of gets to me and I know it shouldn't purely selfish but mm -hmm. you know they have the big blood drive and you go and there's 80 people in front of you <laughs> and um, you know and I know it's all for a good cause and all mm -hmm. of a sudden you're expecting to be gone an hour and a half and it's three and a half hours later because yeah. of everybody they're checking in. Mm -hmm. well, I guess that's probably a good thing that that many people want to show up at the blood drive. I guess I shouldn't take it personal. And well I, I guess you know part of the thing is you, you are a donor and you're donating your time as well as your blood. Right. So if we can do better in our processes to kind of manage your time I think we'd be doing our due diligence. And some of the things that we do now is we really emphasize the uh, appointment. We, right. we encourage all of our donors to make appointments, whether you're donating at a blood drive or donating at a fixed site. We really want to try to have you in at a scheduled time. That way, when you come in, similar to your doctor's appointment, you'll be seen within a 15-minute span of time. Well, you know, you could do it like the doctors do. If somebody makes an appointment and don't show, you could kind of go steal a pint of blood from them or something. <laughs> you know? And I've I got to admit, I'm guilty. Um, UBS, United Blood Service, has called me times that I made appointments that I didn't make it to. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure that affects your people in the office and that kind of thing. If somebody comes in, how long does it usually take them to donate a pint of blood? From start to finish, the process generally takes about an hour. Uh, we typically perform a mini physical, uh, mini interview portion. Well, we just want to make sure that you're providing the safest and purest product that you can. So we want to try to investigate a little bit and we ask some fairly invasive questions, but it's all in the, in the mind frame of just making sure that we are providing the safest product that we can to our hospital patients. So the main reason for the length of time is not actually the needle in your arm for an hour. Right. It's more or less the different parts of the process. And actually, like you mentioned before, you get your juice and cookies. Right during and and after uh, to help rejuvenate uh, what you've given. And you, and you do get a good supply of either one that you want at any given time. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, and I guess you really can't say exactly how long it's going to take because I've gone in there and it took me longer than the person that came next to me and I've gone in there and pumped it out real quick and was out before the person next to me was out. Yep, and typically it varies from person to person. What we encourage people to do is to make sure that they hydrate, drink a lot of water, a lot of fluids, and uh, make sure they eat a balanced meal before they come in to donate. Because we don't want you to donate on an empty stomach because you, you, you tend not to have the best experience. Similarly, if your fluid intake is, is pretty good, then you tend to, like you say, you just kind of flow with it. Right, so, right. So that's, but I will say this, we also have some different procedures that some of them require a little bit more time than your traditional hour, like we have. I was going to ask about double reds. Double red cells. Plasma. Absolutely. So Absolutely. you do all of that down on Eastman? Yes. Okay, yes now why don't you explain what double reds are? The first time I went in, they said, hey, how about double reds? And I said, I got a few hours to kill. Let's do it. Okay. Um, but I've never done plasma. Okay. So what is double reds? Okay. Let me first explain the components of blood. Okay. Uh, in a whole blood unit, you have three components of blood. You have plasma you have platelets, and then you have red cells. Well, a double red cell, like you referred to, we would get two, what's called two packed red cells from your body, and we'd regenerate all of the other fluids, the plasma and platelets, back into your body through our machine. Okay. So we're getting just the red cells from, that, from the blood that you're donating. So generally that would take, oh, one and a half times longer, or twice as long, just as the giving blood spark. You don't have the the intro or, the, or that kind of thing, but about twice as long. Right, during the actual donation process. And that's because the blood is being filtered out and we're giving you back 
uh, the things that we aren't collecting on that day. Right, okay. And it's similarly, we have the plasma collections where it, it's kind of the same program where it takes a little bit longer than your average whole blood donation, but we're, re, we're giving you back the things that we aren't collecting on that day. Yeah. Platelets takes actually the longest because it's the most volatile of the three. Um, platelets generally only last about five to seven days. Wow. Uh, that's their shelf life, yes. Uh, but you can wow. donate platelets more frequently uh, because they tend to rejuvenate a little bit faster. You know, so you has, and I was told, i got a friend that donates, um, Tom Spence, um, mm -hmm. that donates uh, blood regular, and right. I think it's through United Blood Service, but he mm -hmm. said he goes in there and does plasma and watches a new movie. Yep. Uh, that kind of thing. So he's <laughs> just like he's going downtown to watch a movie or something with his blood. And, and that's the thing that we try to promote to our uh, plasma and our, and our platelet donors is that, hey, come and watch a movie with us. And, and while they're watching a the movie, they're, they're generally hooked up to the machine. Uh, but it's, it's just like they're sitting in their living room. It's just they have a needle in their arm. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. It's going to be a total guess, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But if all of a sudden people couldn't donate blood or people, how long of a supply do we have through the different blood services for what is used now? I would say from a national standpoint, we probably would have a couple of months supply. And that's if, if there was we, no disasters we, of any kind. Of no disasters, right. If everything was normal and you just had your elective surgeries or your unfortunate accidents that occur that may require blood, typically we, we have you know a, a good number of supply. but. We like to say because blood expires after a certain period of time. It expires between 35 and 42 days. So, oh, so we want to use that stuff quick. Right. We want to try to make sure that we have a steady supply. So it, it's like we want you to kind of come when we call you and when we tell the recruit you because we need it on the shelves to replace those that may be expiring in the near future. Well, we have about two minutes left to talk. Okay. Um, I do want to know how people get a hold of you um, sure. and about appointments and that kind of thing, hours of operation and that. So why don't you let us know a few of those things? Absolutely. Uh, well, I'll give you first our hours of operation. Um, they vary on Mondays and Tuesdays. Typically, we're open from 10 to 6. Uh, we do take an hour off for lunch. Um, but you can call us at any time to find out where our ne nearest blood drive is or our actual hours of operation. Um, our number typically is 877-UBS-HERO. That's 877-UBS-HERO. Oh, like that. Yeah, because we feel all of our blood donors are heroes. Oh, they sure are. So 877-UBS-HERO is a telephone number. You can also reach us uh, via the web, www.bloodforlife.org. That's bloodforlife.org. Okay, now let's make this a little personal. Sure. How long have you been in blood? I've been in blood banking for almost 12 years now. What, what do you like about the blood? Well, I like the fact that I'm contributing to something that's bigger than me. I'm contributing to the stewardship of my community. Um, I love my job. I love the people that I work, work with and work for. I work for a wonderful organization, and I believe in helping out our fellow man, and this is one of the better ways I know, I know how to do it. Right, and what brought you to Ventura County? You've been here about three years. I've been here about three but with years. With UBS for about 10. Right, right. So <laughs> what I've done is I've kind of transplanted myself to, from different organizations uh, across the nation. So I'm uh, based out of Southeast, uh, came over to the West Coast uh, a couple of years ago, and I enjoy the sunshine. You're going to stick with us? <laughs> I am. I, I enjoy the sunshine. So you're here to stay, getting involved in our community and doing all those community things. That, oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a family man, and, and I participate uh, with my family, and we just enjoy the Ventura area. Well, well, our time's run out. It's really been great, Michael. I learned a lot. I carry a UBS card. Oh, well, we appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Know, you. I We're don't always call my appointments, soon. but I know they do, and they're, <laughs> they are very, very good at calling me and very friendly on the phone. Right. And thank you very much for being here with us. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Well, wasn't that a great show? I certainly learned a lot. I hope you did, too. Uh, my name is Bob Taylor. Um, my guest today has been Michael Jackson with UBS, and I do want to thank you as viewers for being with us. Until next time.